Uh, Jay, one thing we know, uh, we don't need an award show uh, to recognize Michael Bisping as one of the greatest fighters of all time. We've seen all seen his accomplishments, his action inside of the cage. He's, he's created more interest than most people ever to compete in this game. Uh, and people bitch and complain about deserving fights. As a champion, he deserves a huge fight. George St. Pierre, based on the stuff that he's done, he deserves a huge fight upon his return. But from a coach's standpoint, this must be exciting for you to try to solve, you know, the, the solution it's a of fun this. Fun puzzle to solve. Yeah. GSP is a fun guy. He's a fun guy to go back and watch his tapes. He's a fun guy. He is. You know, he draws a lot of attention. You're always, listen, we're human beings. You know what I mean? I mean, I could be, oh, Yoel Romero. Hmm. Yay. Shit. Let's go and watch Yoel Romero. Don't get me wrong. Yoel Romero's a beast. I mean, but does everybody want to fight GSP? Yeah. They don't even care if they win or lose. They just want to fight because they want to get paid. They want to be in the in the limelight. I mean, the, this limelight shit that we're all doing right now is huge for some of these guys, you know. So of course, you. Have, but we love it too because you know what, Michael Bisbee's never ducked anybody in his whole career. He's fought the biggest, strongest, baddest sons of bitches in this sport, man. He really has. And you know what, he gets the opportunity to fight GSP, who's right up there with all the baddest dudes on the planet. And you know what, he wants Michael Bisbee. It. Michael Bisping ain't looking for, Michael Bisping's been fighting. GSP's been doing what he's been doing for the last three years. You know what Michael Bisping's doing for the last three years? He's been fighting. That's what he's been doing. Campaigning for a title, fighting the best of the world, beating the best of the world, and winning a world title. That's what he's done over the last few years. You know what, and what is he doing? He's waiting for Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero's a double tough, scary son of a bitch. We was a crocodile, what's his name? Uh, Jacques Array, all of them. He's waiting for all of them. He's waiting for all of them. And, and hey, Michael Bisping, guess who we want you to fight? Who do you want me to fight? You know, I'll say yes to anybody. We want you to fight GSP. I'm in. Hmm. Gravy, motherfucker. Really, at the end of the day, he's stoked. He's stoked. Not gravy because it's an easy fight. I'm not saying that. It's not an easy fight. But it's a, but it's a fight that you want to fight. Everybody. Everybody. They wanted the fight. When you think about uh, George St. Pierre, and he, he's been away from the game for so long, are you trying to anticipate where, where he's gotten better? Does that, that doesn't matter. You're just trying to do Michael Bisping, the intelligent fighter of now, work with, uh, where hit on his strengths and attack. Because that's what. It's, my, funny, it's funny you ask, because really it's going to be a game of intelligence. Because you know what? I've said it before. I just said in the last interview. Um, we're. Michael really. I mean, Mike's got some physical attributes that are better in a lot of areas. He's got speed, he's got foot speed for a middleweight, you know. I can break down technical aspects of all, all these guys. But it's gonna be a game of intelligence. And George St. Pierre is a very intelligent fighter, but so is Michael Bisping. Because Michael Bisping is actually a small middleweight. Even though he fought light heavyweight, he's a small middleweight. Michael Bisping is the champion of the world because of his intelligence. I mean, his ability, but also his intelligence. You know, I mean, it really comes into a huge play. And I know George St. Pierre is a very intelligent fighter. You know, I think we, there's a lot of areas that we, that we, we, we fall equal on. And there's some areas where I think we're stronger on. You know, so, uh, you know, I, I like the fact that George hasn't been in the cage in three years. I mean, I, I'm a type of type of coach, type of fighter, type of guy that believes that does play a part. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, we're excited. We're excited. And, uh, and uh, I mean, George St. Pierre, we get, we, we, it's not the golden goose. You know, for me, it's not even the money. I don't know how much bigger difference of a pay I'm going to get, per se. You know what I mean? But as far as beating another legend, that's going to make me a very happy man. And, and and what is your role? Like how 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 intricate of details uh, d does it come down to paperwork and structure and scheduling and and trying to find all the perfect details to have the formula to beat a guy that you know is going to take Michael Bisping as serious as any fighter in the history of the world uh, when it comes down to laying out strategy for you and how and how excited do you get when you when you have a chance to solve a, a problem like this well you know as far as paperwork if I was in the paperwork I would be doing something else the last thing I'm doing is picking up a pen and paper I promise you that but uh, yeah, whiteboard, not even that. Just maybe stare at a screen for a little bit and be like, this guy, fuck this guy. <laughs> but you know how it is. I mean, you know, of course, I've studied George St. Pierre before. Um, 
Michael's a, a student of the game. He really he studies it, and we do we, we, we do spend a, a tremendous amount of time together. We we spend a lot of time talking and obviously training, but you know we gain a lot of grounds talking to each other. Also, uh, usually happens after uh, after the training when the endorphins are going, and, and and we kind of felt the the heat of what we're trying to get ready for. Uh, but uh, you know George Tapier again, he's a puzzle. You know, he's an intelligent fighter, and that's what I'm going against. I'm going against a guy, my fighter's going against a guy that has a strong team, an intelligent team. He's an intelligent fighter. Um, he has, he's gifted in a lot of areas. He's a very strong guy, a, a tremendous wrestler, but he does also have a good jab and a good stand-up game. You know, he's a smart fighter, and uh, it's, it's going to make it a very fun, fun event. Coach of the Year uh, up for the nomination. We've seen you in the corner of some of the biggest fights ever. Uh, how, how interesting is it to be behind the scenes and know all the work that these guys have put in to get to showcase uh, their art and their creativity and the beauty of combat on this big stage? You know what's really cool is this. This is what's really cool for these guys and for me. You know what I mean? Like, this is what we do and we were doing when we were little kids. You know what I mean? We're like, even like, I mean, I'm an old man now, but we're, when I was a kid, I did this and we did that. We, you know, you, you never picture this. You know, I'm, I'm sitting as a coach, sitting on a red carpet, talking to you guys about my athletes, my fighters, that, you know, they, they'd be doing this whether this carpet's here or not. You know, Michael Bisbee would be fighting a barn. You know, if you're going to pay him 50 bucks and that's how he's going to pay his rent for the week, he's going to be in that barn fist fighting. You know what I mean? And, and, and it makes it really special that the sport, again, has got as big as it is. And, you know, we can do stuff like this. And, you know, we can be up and have nominees and get some free cocktails and walk a red carpet. You know, it's a, it's a great deal, man.